Today is January 4th, 2023. This is my 183rd episode for C17 2023 CUDA SQL OpenGL TBB Vulkan. This is also 13th episode about vector calculus. In this episode, I will discuss with this title Remember TNB Frame or Plane A Frame forever. If you learn something, do you forget the things that you learned? In my case, I try to retain those things I learned. For example, create buffers named buffer stories, bind the buffer to each target, create vertex arrays, bind the vertex array, enable vertex attribute array, vertex attribute pointer. I make songs that I have learned. These songs help me to retain my memory. I learned CUDA programming. Grid dim block dim block count thread count. Grid dim block dim block count thread count. Even though I don't use OpenGL or CUDA these days, I still remember what I have learned through OpenGL programming or CUDA programming because I learned them with my efforts pouring my valuable time and resources to learn them, to which I devoted myself so many hours. They are hard earned or hard learned. I can't forget them. If you think you have high IQ and you are quick at learning, especially mathematics, then don't watch this video. In this video, I will share my experience learning mathematics. I began to learn calculus using Thomas's calculus early transcendentals. In this book, the most important chapters are chapter 1, the concept of function, limits, and continuity, and derivatives. Especially in chapter 2, precise definition of a limit. Once again, the precise definition of a limit is uh, the most important topics in this book. If you scroll down, you can find definition of limit. Then definition. In this definition, every each word matters. Once again, every each word matters. Let f of x be defined on an open interval about c. f of x is defined on an open interval. This open interval matters, except possibly as c itself. Except possibly as c itself. This except matters. This word except matters. We say that the limit of fx as x approaches c is the number l, and the right as x approaches c, the limit of f of x is l. If for every number epsilon greater than zero, every number epsilon, every number matters, every number epsilon greater than zero matters greater than zero for any number epsilon that is greater than zero. There exists a corresponding number delta greater than zero. There exist exist matters a corresponding number delta greater than zero greater than zero matters such that for all x for all matters for all x the distance between x and c, the distance between x and c, c is a point in the open interval. The distance between x and c is greater than zero, greater than zero, greater than matters, less than delta, less than delta, less than matters. If the distance between x and c is greater than zero and less than delta implies, once again, implies, the distance between f of x 
and L is less than epsilon. Once again, the distance between f of x and L is less than epsilon. In this definition, every each word matters. Very important. I remember when I first learned calculus, this definition was very challenging. It took me over two weeks to completely understand this definition. Once again, to understand this single definition, it took me over two weeks. In this episode, I will not discuss this definition because I need to discuss T and B plane. But I will give you some hints about how to learn mathematics. The distance between x and c should be greater than 0. It means x can never be c because the distance should always greater than 0. x can never be c. So in this figure, x cannot be c. It is blank. Also, the distance between x and c should be less than delta means open interval about c. The distance between x and c should be greater than 0 means x cannot be c. So, except possibly as c itself. Another thing we should note is that the distance between f of x and l should be less than epsilon. It means f of x is not defined as c, so the value of f of x can approach l, but can never be the same. Okay? Epsilon can be smaller and smaller, infinitesimally smaller. So, f of x can never be the value l itself. This definition says everything about calculus. Once again, this definition says everything about calculus. If you understand precise definition of a limit, this whole book, Thomas's Calculus, becomes a novel. You can read this book as if you are reading a novel if you completely understand definition of a limit. In the same manner, you can also read Advanced Engineering Mathematics as if you are reading a novel. I'm serious. If you completely understand the precise definition of a limit, you can read Advanced Mathematics or calculus as if you are reading a novel. Please understand, the approach to mathematics is very different from that of physics. Once again, the approach to mathematics is very different from that of physics. In my previous episode, I said you have to be able to drive the formulas by yourself then you have to be able to interpret or read the algebraic formulas. You have to be able to generate numerical figures and compare them with the observations. If your numerical figures do not match with the observations or phenomena, it's very likely either your theory is wrong in the first hand or you failed to drive your formulas correctly. There's one thing very fundamental in the physics. Either your theory is wrong in the first hand or you failed to drive your formulas correctly. Step 1, 2, 3 are the process to verify your theory. The jealous step is you need to have keen observant eyes. This means you need to observe the phenomena Without keen observation of the phenomena, without keen observations, you cannot make your own theory. The process 
turning your own theory into mathematical formulas. This step is called mathematical modeling. But in case of mathematics, in case of mathematics, everything starts with the definitions. So the approach to mathematics is very different from that of physics. The bottom line is we have to completely understand and memorize the definitions in mathematics. From now on, I will go very slow. In this book, chapter 13, Vector Valued Function and Motions in Space. Actually, I need to discuss arc length first, but I will skip this part. Instead, I am going to discuss which formulas you should remember, which formulas you don't need to remember. Formulas are useful, but not essential. What you should remember or completely understand is a definition. As I emphasized in the introductory part of this video, is a completely understanding definition, not individual formulas. This definition of curvature should be memorized, completely understood. However, you may or may not to remember this formula. Once again, you have to completely understand this definition, but you may or may not need to remember this formula, or you have to completely understand and remember this definition. Definition for principal unit normal. You have to understand and remember this definition. If you remember the definition, you can get this formula for free. Once again, if you completely understand this definition for principal unit normal, you can get this formula for free. The TNB frame. You have to remember what is binomial vector over curve in space. Binomial vector B is cross product of T and N, unit tangent vector and the principal normal. A is acceleration. You don't need to remember this formula. If you remember these things, it can be helpful, but as long as you remember this formula, you can get a t tangential a n normal scalar confront of acceleration automatically. Once again, if you remember acceleration a can be decomposed to tangential and normal confront, you can get this result automatically. You don't need to remember this formula because you will get it intuitively. Once again, you cannot remember this formula or you should not remember this formula because you should get this formula intuitively. Scroll down. You have to remember this definition because this is definition you have to completely understand the definition of torsion. You have to completely memorize and understand. But you don't need to remember this formula. No, you don't. You don't need to remember this formula. No, you don't. Because if you understand the definition of curvature, you can drive this formula anytime. In the same manner, if you remember or understand the definition of torsion, you can drive this formula anytime. If you remember this formula or this formula, you can save time in your computation. But sadly, we cannot remember all the formulas in this book. We have to remember selectively. 
that really matters. Even if I forget this formula or this formula, I can drive these formulas, these formulas instantly. So don't try to memorize these formulas. You can't remember. Try to remember the definition. How can you remember such definition? If you understand what it means, you don't need to memorize. Once again, if you understand what it means, you don't need to memorize. Whenever I think of for the expression, I remind me of four kinds of for the expression. Whenever I think of C++ concepts, I remind me of four requirements. In case of for the expression, unary, left folder, unary, right folder, binary, left folder, binary, right folder. Whenever I think of C++ concepts, I remind me of four requirements. Simple requirements, type requirements, compound requirements, nested requirements. When I learn something systematically, I remember the number of kinds. The number of kinds. Also, remember the names. Remember the names. So, I cannot forget. We will list 10 definitions for T and B frame. Or plan A frame. We have to remember 10 definitions completely and correctly. R of T is represented X of T, I plus Y of T, J plus Z of T, K. This is the position vector. Now, 1. Unit tangent vector T is the unit vector of the velocity. 2. Unit principle normal vector n is the unit vector of the derivative of unit tangent vector t with respect to time t. Unit binomial vector b is t cross n or unit tangent cross principal normal for the rate of change of the unit tangent vector t is curvature times the principal normal vector n. 5. The rate of change of the binomial vector b is torsion times negative principal normal vector n. 6. The curvature is the magnitude of the rate of change of the unit tangent vector t. The torsion is the rate of change of binomial vector b in the negative direction of principal normal n. Oscillating plane is the plane formed by the unit tangent t and the principal normal n in the order and its normal 
vector is binomial vector B. 9. Normal plane is the plane formed by the principal normal N and binomial B in the order and its normal vector is unit tangent vector T. 10. Vector fine plane is the plane formed by the binomial B and unit tangent T in the order and its normal vector is the principal normal vector N. These 10 things may look overwhelming, but if we analyze one by one, it's not that much complex. I made a type here. Negative principal normal vector. If these things look overwhelming, we can split into sections of related parts like this. So we have three sections. Second section, number four, five, six, seven. This part is most challenging. Copy. I will make demarcation. Then paste. I will go over one by one. Unit tangent vector is the unit vector of the velocity. So unit tangent vector is unit vector of the velocity or velocity over magnitude of velocity. Or it can be represented dr over dt magnitude of dr over dt. So this is unit tangent vector. Now principal normal vector is unit vector of the derivative of unit tangent vector with respect to time t. Unit principal normal vector is unit vector of the derivative of unit tangent vector with respect to t. Derivative of unit tangent vector with respect to t and its unit vector. So its magnitude should come here. Read once again. Unit principal normal vector n is unit vector of the derivative of unit tangent vector with respect to t. Derivative of unit tangent vector with respect to t. Derivative of unit tangent vector with respect to t. The unit vector of the derivative of unit tangent vector with respect to t. Please compare unit tangent vector t dr over dt over magnitude of dr over dt. In case of unit principal normal, we differentiate unit tangent vector with respect to t, then take its unit vector. Now binomial vector b is cross product of unit tangent vector and the unit principal normal vector. So we covered 1, 2, 3. Now the rate of change of unit tangent vector t, we can say dt over ds. Okay, this is dt over ds. The rate of change of unit tangent vector is curvature k times the principal normal vector n times the principal normal vector n. Now this part, the rate of change of binomial vector, the rate of change of binomial vector db over ds is torsion times 
Torsion Times Negative Principle Normal Vector Negative Principle Normal Vector Please compare DT over DS This is vector quantity because T is unit tangent vector DS DS is magnitude of velocity or speed dt or magnitude of velocity speed equals change of speed over change of time or ds this is not change of speed change of distance over change of time we call it speed okay ds is magnitude of velocity or speed dt ds is called arc length differentials okay ds is called arc length differential now please compare dt over ds n is vector unit vector or principal normal vector db over ds or rate of change of binormal vector or rate of change of binormal vector is a vector so negative principal normal vector times torsion t represent torsion the rate of change of dt with respect to distance or arc length the rate of change of binomial vector with respect to distance or arc length they look symmetry unit tangent vector is vector quantity binomial vector is vector quantity curvature k is scalar quantity torsion t is scalar quantity these are definitions you can easily remember the rate of change of unit tangent vector has the same direction with the normal vector. The rate of change of binormal vector has negative principal normal vector direction. K, T, curvature, torsion are scalar multiple to principal normal vector N to negative principal normal vector N. Now, the curvature is the magnitude of the rate of change of the unit tangent vector. Curvature is magnitude. So, we need absolute value rate of change of unit tangent vector dt over ds. Curvature k is the magnitude of the rate of change of unit tangent vector is curvature. Now, torsion T is the rate of change of binomial vector. So, dB over ds in the negative direction of principal normal. This is vector quantity. Okay, dB is vector quantity. Then T is scalar quantity. We need dot product in the negative direction of principal normal. So in the negative direction of principal normal, it should be dot product because this is vector quantity. This is vector quantity. We have to do dot product to make t scalar. Curvature k is scalar quantity. Torsion t is scalar quantity. Now, oscillating plane is the plane formed by unit tangent vector and principal normal vector in the order. Its normal vector is binormal vector. In this figure, this is unit tangent vector. This is principal normal vector.
This is binomial vector. The plane formed by unit tangent vector and normal vector is oscillating plane. And the oscillating planes, oscillating planes formed by unit tangent vector, principal normal vector, its normal vector is binormal. The plane formed principal normal vector, this is principal normal vector, this is binormal vector, the plane formed principal normal vector and the binormal vector is called the normal plane. You can remember this plane, normal plane. This normal plane has unit tangent vector as its normal vector. Unit tangent vector is normal to normal plane. This plane formed by binormal vector, unit tangent vector, binormal vector, unit tangent vector is called the rectifying plane. The normal vector of this rectifying plane is principal normal. These are explained in what oscillating plane is the plane formed by unit tangent vector and the principal normal vector in the order. Oscillating plane, oscillating plane is the plane formed by unit tangent vector and the principal normal vector in the order. It should be T N, not N T. Okay? This oscillating plane is formed unit tangent vector and the principal normal vector. This oscillating plane is not formed by principal normal vector and the unit tangent vector. The order matters. T and the order matters. Oscillating plane's normal vector is binormal. Now, binormal plane is the plane formed by principal normal and the binormal in the order. And the, its normal vector is unit tangent vector. Now, binormal plane is formed by principal normal n and the binormal B. The order matters. N, B. Its normal vector is unit tangent vector. Unit tangent vector meets normal plane perpendicular. Now, rectifying plane is formed by binormal vector B and the unit tangent vector. Its Normal vector is principal normal vector. If you picture this figure in your head or in your brain, then you can understand what it means. Rectifying plane is the plane formed by the binormal and the unit tangent. Rectifying plane is the plane formed by binormal and the unit tangent vector in the order B, T, and uh, its normal vector is principal normal, and uh, its normal vector is principal normal. So, if you can picture this figure in your head, in your brain, you can speak it out in English. If you can't picture this figure in your brain, you can't speak it out.